Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for grade five, Eureka Math, module four, lesson six, homework. And this is a fun lesson. Please go watch the problem set video if you do not know what you're doing or if you haven't had a chance to work on it yet. Uh, also finish the homework uh, before you watch the video because spoiler alert, I'm gonna give you the answers. Okay. So, um, but not without a lot of coaching, because that's what I'm trying to do here is to help you coach yourself through so that you understand what you're doing. Uh, the objective at the bottom of the page is to relate fractions as division to fractions of a set. So the last few lessons have all been about understanding fractions as division. So what the heck is a fraction anyway? And then the set is going to be a whole number. So uh, it used to be a fraction of a number was what we called it. And now it's a fraction of a set. It's all the same thing. We're just taking a piece of a number. So what is the number? The number is the whole here. So 12 in a picture would look like this. No, you don't have to do diamonds when you're drawing it. You can make circles. It's a whole lot easier. And um, what you want to look for is the connection between the denominator and the number of sets. So the denominator is going to tell you how many uh, sets there are. And then the numerator is basically selecting a certain number of those. So if I have 12 diamonds, that's my entire set. So what is the value of one of those sets that is going to be four? So there's nothing to do on this activity except count. Two sets would be eight and three sets of three would be all 12. So that is the whole of 12. Remember, three thirds is equal to one. So it's like, I want the whole thing of 12. One set of 12 is 12. And that makes sense. So the next one is not just five. If you look at that, you say, oh, I've seen those on dice. It looks like five. Yes, it is. But it's five, 10, 15, 20. The whole set is 20. So one fourth of 20, notice the four corresponds with the number of sets. One set of those is five. So therefore, it's basically just looking at two sets, 10, three sets, 15, four sets, 20. And so 5, 10, 15, 20, as you would count through pieces. It's so easy. That's probably why you love this lesson, right? Um, now on this one, we have a whole bunch there. And you might look at it and say, I don't really know how much that is uh, just by looking at it because it's not in a familiar picture to me. So um, when you look down here, you see, okay, it's 35. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is an array. You've been working on those since third grade. So this is telling us it's 35 in the set, and now we're just going to take it apart into 1 fifth. So 1 out of the 5 would make 7. We're talking about groups of 7. And so now count by 7s. Two groups of, of 7 would be 14. Three groups of seven would be 21, and so on, 28. Now, all of this, this is the whole set, gives you the 35. You're like, what's happening here? It's an improper fraction. It's not represented in the picture. That's okay. We know that we're counting by sevens. It's another set of seven. So six-fifths of 35 would actually be the next set of seven, which is 42. So take your number in a set, which is seven, and then you're going to multiply it by how many sets you have. And this is the number of sets. Now on the back is when we really get to kind of apply and think um, if you understand this. So you're going to be doing the drawing. So find two thirds of 18, draw a set and shade to show your thinking. That's when I said, hey, you don't have to use diamonds. You can use circles, it's a whole lot easier. So I need to make 18 total somethings, but I want it to be in the denominator tells you number of uh, groupings. So if I go one, two, three, then I have my three sets. Okay, now if I have two thirds of 18, then I'm going to want two of them. And so I need to count up to 18 because I have to draw. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now I've drawn 18 things. It's in three sets. And I want to know how much two of them are. So shade to show you understand that we're taking two of these sets. Now, how many are in one set? That's going to be this 18 divided by 3 to find out 6 in one set. So if there are 6 in one set, then it's 6 times 2 for 12 in two sets. So 12, that's your answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, hopefully you understand that. This one was always very concrete, this whole, this whole concept. Uh, it was very fun for me as a child. How does knowing one-fifth of 10 help you find three-fifths of 10? So if I have 10 and I want to have these sets of five, so one, two, three, four, five, again, making these rows, if you will, to help you, but I need to have 10 in my set, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So if I have five sets, then there are two in each set. So how does knowing that there are two in each set help you find three fifths? Because if you know how many are in one set, then all you have to do is multiply by the numerator in order to get um, the answer, okay? So if I wanna know three-fifths of 10, then I have two times three for six. And I'm showing my thinking right here, okay? So three-fifths would be three sets out of five. One of them has two. Three of them has six. How about for number four? Sarah just turned 18. She spent four-ninths of her life living in Rochester, New York. How many years did Sarah live in Rochester? So she has four-ninths of 18. So if I have 18 and it's in nine groups, let's do it this way since I have more room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets and I have to count up to 18, okay? Then there, if there are nine sets to make my 18, and I have four ninths, so I have one, two, three, four. So four ninths of 18 and I'm going to write it out like this because in the future we're not going to have um, the area models or the pictures to go with it. I want you to start noticing the connection between the numbers and also very important uh, piece of information. The word of, it, it really means multiply. So rewrite this to help yourself start learning about of meaning multiply. Also, another thing, when you have a whole number, if you put that over one, that is still the value of the number. So start looking at what you're doing with the numbers because this is gonna be that where we're going, the next step. So if four ninths of her life she was living in Rochester, how many years did Sarah live in Rochester? Then it would be eight years, two, four, six, eight each of these uh, circles representing one year of her life. So that's eight years. Okay, because one set equals two, and we have four sets. There you go. Okay, so hopefully that is helpful. Always click subscribe, come back again. Just wanna help you out. Okay, last one, kind of complicated really. A farmer collected 12 
dozen eggs. Now a dozen is 12, so you, it's like 12 12s from her chickens. She sold five sixths of the eggs. Now how many eggs, not how many dozen, that needs to be clarified, at the farmer's market and gave the rest to friends and neighbors. So first question is how many dozen eggs did the farmer give away? Now that's the second part after we figure out the sales. And then how many eggs did she give away? How many dozen eggs and how many eggs is that? So we have 12 dozen. First step, 12 times 12. If you know your 12s, it's 144. So if she sells 5 sixths of 144, notice I'm not going to make 144 eggs. No, I'm not. I'm going to write this with my mathematical statement and I'm going to use the multiplication sign to figure out uh, the numbers so that I can not have to draw this massive picture. Okay, one of the things that um, we're going to be doing in upcoming lessons, but uh, we haven't really, they haven't really shown you how to do it, is to simplify a problem to make it easier. Um, we did talk about simplifying some single fractions at a time, like if this was 10 twelfths, it could become 5 sixths. But what happens if I have to multiply 5 times 144 and then divide it by 6? Well, if I'm going to divide it by 6, why not divide by 6 before I multiply? Because I'm just going to, it's all going to work out in the end. So this is called cross canceling or simplifying. And I say simplify before you multiply. Now, I don't think this is anywhere in the book, so hang in there. I want to take these two numbers and I want to cross cancel or simplify because I don't want to multiply and then have to divide bigger numbers. So 6 is divisible into 144. First of all, 6 is divisible into 6 one time. So I'm going to create a new set of numbers using 6 as my divisor. Then 144 divided by 6. First of all, 14 divided by 6 is 2, with 2 left over to make 24, and then that would be 4. So 5 times 24 is how many eggs the farmer gave away. I, I know it's kind of complicated. If you hang in there with me on this one, you'll get the problem done. So uh, 5 times 24, 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 uh, is 12. And then you have 120 over 1, which is 120. It's 120 eggs are the amount that were sold. Okay, and you can always figure it out any other way that you like, but it, hopefully you got 120 eggs. So when we talk about the dozens, how many dozen eggs? If 12 makes a dozen, look at right here, then how many dozen did the farmer give away? Well, there's only a zero left over, so it's 10 times the value of 12, so it's 10 a dozen. So uh, sold 10 dozen. Okay, now, the giving away is from the total. Take that total, and we want to know how many dozen eggs the farmer gave away. So if, I, if they sold 120, okay, or 10 dozen, then this is the gave away amount. So 144 minus 120 makes 24 that they gave away. Now that we know how much is left, we can see how many dozen eggs, again using 12, 12 and a dozen. So how many dozen? Two dozen were given away, gave away, two dozen or 24 eggs. Kind of complicated, 
but that should be your answer. Okay, and again, now you know all the parts. This is the egg sold. They don't really ask you for this uh, yet. They don't ask you for that at all. Anyway, now you know. You know extra stuff. You know all the stuff. Okay, for B, you're almost done. She sold each dozen for $4.50. That's right, we do need that. She sold each dozen for $4.50. How much did she earn from the eggs she sold? So she sold 10 dozen. I know there's a reason I'm doing this. And each time she sold a dozen, it was $4.50. So go back to module one, lesson one. When multiplying a number by a power of 10 and it has a decimal, shift the digits to the left if you're multiplying, shift the digits to the right if you're dividing, if you're one of the people who says, I just want to move the decimal, if I place the decimal here, I, it's like I have shifted the digits. So 10 dozen times $4.50, how much did she earn? She earned $45. And that is it. So yay, not too bad of a lesson. Um, I hope you liked it. And of course, if you like the videos, click subscribe and come back. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Goodbye for today.